Right, turbot tactics, how to catch giant flatties. Um, so turbot and brill, so the season, um, you can argue that they're caught throughout the 12 month period, April and May will produce, but the peak time is from June through to November, with September to mid-November, typically given the best numbers and the biggest fish. In contrast, brill are the most, are more a summer and autumn species with the main season running from July to November. They are also found in lesser numbers than the turbot, though the two happily seem to coexist with some slight differences. So brill prefer the coarse and sand and gravel. Turbot favour the sandbanks and fine shingle. So turbot seek out areas where the tidal influence creates sandbanks with steeply angled sides dropping into deep water. The turbot like to face the oncoming tide sitting on the inclines of the bank and intercept prey species as they are swept past. Turbot favour sand and fine shingle, fine enough to allow them to bury or cover themselves or camouflage, leaving just their immediate head and eyes to watch their food. Probably trying to stay out of the way of a taupe or something like that. I've actually um, seen pictures of turbot which have actually got a chunk out of them. Because, um, um, yeah. Brill can be resident over coarse sand and or mix of sand and gravel, but they seem to show a definitive preference for gravel and shingle cleaning out hollows as they lay. This is useful information, as when using braided lines and leads will slide over the clean sand with just a bump or two when it passes over ripples in the sand, indicating a higher chance of turbot. But you can feel the continual shudder and knocks when the ground features are harder, a better chance of a brill. So depths needed to be 30 foot or more, ideally over the top of the sandbank, with the angled banks dropping deeper. Even big turbot and brill are commonest in depths of around 170 foot, however their numbers are greatly more declined. Right, so they also take up residence of shallow inshore wrecks. It's not uncommon to get them um, over wrecks and things like that. It's another feature that really gets targeted and only fish for pollock, cod and coleys with retrieved lures. Okay, so tides, the area you're fishing and how the tides affect it are key to catching turbot and brill. In fast tidal areas, the smaller neat tides will obviously be favoured, offering a slower drift speed so the ground feature can be fully recovered, fully covered, and the bait presented correctly. Areas with a lighter tidal influence may be fishable on the bigger spring tide, but sandbanks are formed by the more powerful tides. So the neeps tend to be the ones fished. For drift fishing, you don't want tied tidal speeds of much more than two knots or so. Above this, the fish have issues catching baits up. Both species like some flow in water, so expect the period when the flow first starts to pick up to be the most productive with bites easing away from mid-tide towards high water. It's the same on the ebb with the first flow often seeing the better fishing. Okay, without doubt, on smaller banks, turbot and to a lesser extent, brill will move from one side of the sand bank to the other as the tide is slack. Occasionally, fish will be caught as they make this transmission. However, I'm not convinced they all do. I think the bigger fish feeding on the bigger prey will whiting and flatfish probably eat in short bursts, then laying up, staying in one productive place, waiting until the tide turns again by simply turning their heads to face the tide flow. If you take note, it's often just one side of the bank that tends to produce the better fish, indicating this is to be the case. So weather patterns in water depths of 100 foot or less, then rough weather and prolonged heavy seas can disturb large volumes of sand and sediment. In this instance, the turbine brill will move off the banks and out into deeper water for a period. It takes a few tides for them to return. The best weather pattern is a period of light onshore winds combining with relatively clear seas, a steady baromic pressure and tides on an upward cycle. If you can time a trip just prior to a big pressure drop with rising tides, this can be seen as a major increase in catches. Bright sunlight can also be an issue when fishing shallow banks with a cloudy more overcast day giving better fishing. A light wind to put a ripple on the water surface is perfect as it reduces light levels of entering the water column. So tackle 12 pound class outfit, fishing a light reel holding 300 yards of 20 pound braid. Uh, more than suffice, most areas require legs between six and 12 pounds. And for this, a 20 pound class 
rolled from extra mod multiplier, 30 pound braid. In deep water, say 150 feet, go for 30 pound class rod on the same road as a 20 pound class. Please remember that both turbo and brill are mainly sight feeders, so add a fluorocarbon leader to the end of the braid, say around twice the length of your rod or a little more. Um, yeah, okay, mono, fluorocarbon, don't think it makes a lot of difference to be quite honest. On the 12 and 20 pound class, go for a 30 pound leader and on the 30 pound rod, use a 40, 50 pound leader. For drift fishing and around watch legs are popular as they kick up spurts of sand as the lead is dragged along. Personally, I prefer the heavier carp leads used for positioning baits from boats or in all rivers, often referred to as tractor tires. These weigh up to 12 ounces. Right, so rigs, a simple rig, um, ledger rig is best constructed by sliding a zip slider boom onto the fluorocarbon leader and a 5mm bead and tie a size 2 swivel to the end of the fluorocarbon. The hook length is then tied to the free eye of the swivel and should be between 30 and 60 inches in length from and from 30 to 40 pound fluorocarbon. Drop the rig through the water column slowly and when the lead hits the seabed lift the rod tip up sharply 3 foot and this will pull the hook from straight for Perfect presentation. Okay. To bait. Fresh mackerel cut into white belly strips between six to eight inches in length are very effective. Frozen mackerel, mackerel also works. Okay, small poor cod and powder cut as a flapper with the backbone cut out flapper whiting and big lawns also work well. I personally wouldn't stray from um, mackerel to be brutally honest. Um, sand eels work well, fresh launch, live sand eels can work as well. So tactics, if you're positioned on the side of the boat facing the direction of the drift, use a lead heavy enough to keep your line vertical and the lead touching the seabed at all times. If you let the lead drift under the boat too much, you'll tangle up. Right, to other lines, if you're on the opposite side of the boat facing away from the drift direction, you can use a lighter lead and let more line out to get a shallower angle of line for better bite detection, plus reduce the chances of tangles. Use a lead that just keeps contact with the seabed, but when you lift the rod a foot or two, you can spill off a few feet of line and slowly trot the boat further away from you. Occasionally pause and retrieve by releasing a little line as this will give a chasing turbo or brill the chance to catch up and eat the bait during faster drifts. Yes, yeah, so on, on, a, on a faster drift or just any drift, just basically just let out um, a lot more line than you would you usually as if you were like um, up tiding or you had a fixed bait, give them a chance to catch up to the bait. Don't just let the boats moving really fast. So you know, make sure you let out a lot of line. Um, keep changing the size of the lead weight as the drift speed changes to maintain this balance. If you can also pay to pull the rod tip back a couple of feet now and then, this sees the bait accelerate forward, then drop back. Turbo especially will take the bait as it drops back during this maneuver. Hold the rod and feel the lead dragging over the seabed. Braid is very sensitive, so ignore steady bumps, knocks and taps. Grab it type baits from both a brill and a turbo on faster drifts will be a slow increase in rod tip pressure than a kick. These fish are usually well hooked. During slower drifts, bites tend to be a series of taps. When this occurs, release a few feet of line to give the fish time to fully take in the bait. Re-engage the reel, let the line come right tight and just let the increase in bend in the rod set the hook for you. There's no need to strike. Turbo and Brill both fight by trying to get their heads down and making short head thumping dives. They will also turn their bodies sideways to the current increasing pressure. Make sure you have the drag set so the line can be given freely when needed. Use a gentle touch of the thumb to add more pressure if you need to. Yeah, so um, with a turbo, when he's on, um, like you say, drag set just right. Like you say, if you've got braid, you don't want to sort of snap a knot or anything like that. 
and you literally, um, you know, he's, he's a, you know, the term is dustbin lid, and he comes up like a dustbin lid. Do you know what I'm saying? So you have to fight it accordingly. Do you know what I'm saying? You take your time. You often find the fish will come up a long way back from the boat on the surface. A bit like if you're up tied with a cod with their mouths wide open, big fish. He comes up about, you know, 30, 40 yards from the boat. So you've just got to play him on the surface. It's the same with the turbot. He'll come up right up high, up back from the boat, you know, um, just take your time. And, um, and that's it. The skipper usually sort of help you in those situations as well. Okay, guys, thanks for listening in. There's your turbot tactics there. And um, speak to you later. All right, cheers.